We're in a series called Emotional Intelligence. How many of you have been enjoying this? I see other churches in Sioux Falls are talking about emotions. Yeah, I, I see other churches starting new series on emotions today, actually. And we've been talking about it for a long time. So some of you are like, why are we talking about it? What about, listen, other people are watching and they're also talking about it because it's a big, big deal. Um, today, my topic is called, how is your elephant? How is your elephant? Turn to your neighbor and just kind of smile and say, how is your elephant? Okay, keep it clean, people. <laughs> All right, settle down, let me start. I said this um, for the last two week, the most, the weeks, the most annoying prolonged pain I have ever experienced in my life was not caused by other people. Probably the same thing would apply to you. But it was caused by my own heart. And I like to call it an elephant today. I want to call our heart an elephant today. It was caused by my own heart. I have, since I, I was a teenager, I remember struggling with fear. I was working night shift by myself at a restaurant in Citibank. And my... Um, co-workers all left the job site and I usually turned on the, up the music and I would mop the floors and clean up the whole restaurant. That was my job. And one night as I was mopping the floor, my supervisor came back and she's like, and from behind me, she stood right behind me and she yelled and she had that loud voice. Turn off that music! And I just froze. Like 16, 17 years old, I froze. From that on, from that time on, everywhere I went, I was experiencing crazy fear. I didn't know what to do. I was a Christian. I felt like there was demons behind me, attacked, ready to attack me. And I have struggled with it till about my 30s. And um, it wasn't fun. Even praying, I struggled with feeling like something was going to attack me. And I remember one day I got so sick and tired of fighting with this fear. I got so sick and tired of living with it. You know, you got to get sick and tired of the devil in your life. Yeah. The enemy in your life. <laughs> and you know what I did? I came to church at night because I would be afraid in church being by myself. So I would ask people, please don't leave without me. So, I, you know, uh, and I would come up with an excuse why I didn't want to be in church alone. It would be everywhere alone. Fear would just pursue me. Instead of goodness and mercy pursuing me, fear was pursuing me. And one day I said, I'm tired of this. And if I, and so I came to church at about 10.30 at night. I went to the basement to the youth room, and it's dark there. It's the darkest room in a, <laughs> in a building, the youth room. <laughs> They're trying to lighten it up right now. And I said, I'm not leaving here by myself. I'm not leaving here until I get victory over this fear. And I said, devil, if you want to fight, come on. Guys, what I experienced for the next till 7 in the morning was crazy. I, I yelled Bible verses, and the harder I yelled, the more it seemed like the enemy would attack my life. My hair would be like, I would have goosebumps all over, and it would came in waves. It came in waves. It was like the demons were harassing me. I don't know if you even believe in this stuff, but this is what I've experienced. I know how it is to live with fear. 
And then I would yell, in Jesus' name, you need to leave me alone. And I would plead the blood of Jesus. I mean, I'm a religious Christian boy. (laughs) I grew up in church. I know all the lingo. I know what you should do. But I've never really lived it. You know, you can know it because your parents taught it. But you get strength and victory when you live it. And finally, at about 3 in the morning, I heard Holy Spirit give me a thought. And he said, stop yelling at them. Command them in quiet, authoritative voice. And he said, because when I would yell, it feels like they would more attack me. And then later I recognized I was yelling out of fear. Some of you are praying out of fear. Jesus, Jesus. And the Lord says, I can't hear that. Prayer of faith is what? Right? Right? Bible talks about prayer of faith. Many of us pray a prayer of panic. (laughs) Many of us pray a prayer of fear. And that's what I was doing. I I was fighting the devil with a loud voice, but it was a voice of fear and panic. And God says, no, no, no. You have the authority in you, and all you have to do is speak authoritatively. And I said, in Jesus' name, I'm not afraid. If you want to appear here, appear. We'll fight. We'll test this shield of faith and sword of the Spirit (laughs) that we hear about in church. And as I begin to speak authoritatively, the enemy would flee. I could feel it flee. And as I would yell again, the enemy would, and it would come in waves, like a wave would come. Back and forth, back and forth, attacking my life. And at 7 a.m., a.m., I received a free, I, I received freedom and victory. And although I struggled with different fears, I've never struggled since about 30 years old, or even a little younger, I've never struggled with this fear. And if now it doesn't mean that the enemy doesn't come back. The enemy still comes, but guess what I do? In a soft, authoritative, commanding voice, I tell him, in Jesus' name, you got to go. You don't belong here. Did you know the kind of power you possess and the one who lives in you? He who lives in you is greater than he who is in the world. And guys, I wish I could say I prayed about it and God removed it out of my life. I just prayed about it. You know, all you have to do is pray about it. No, you got to pray and you got to fight. Fight the good fight of faith. See, a lot of you way too spiritual. All you do is pray. But you got to also fight. You got to get up out of your couch. You got to get up out of in front of the TV or in front of the internet or social media. And you got to fight the enemy. Guys, it was so hard for me to, uh, to do that. Come to 11 at night in church in the middle of the winter and fight by myself in the darkest room. But, it, but I knew God was with me. And you know, devil is a coward. Coward. He never once showed up in front of me in physical form. Never once. He's defeated. He is disbodied. Demons are disbodied spirit. All they can do is they can scare you. All they can do is they can bring fear into your heart. But I've wasted so many years walking in fear and now I think man I wish I could have went earlier in my early 20s and 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 fought the enemy and had victory and here's what Bible says man you're strong because you have defeated the devil men women you are strong because you have defeated I know something is still fighting you and instead of just praying and you must pray Because without me, Jesus said, you cannot do anything. But without you, he can't do anything either. 
It's a partnership. I've learned every time I've tested God, I've learned that it's a partnership. It's not just Him doing it for me. God help me with my financial problems. He says, I want to partner with you and teach you. I'm not just going to give you a check out of nowhere. I mean, it happens sometimes, even in the Bible. But more, for most of us, we have to work with God. You have to work with God. You have to submit your will to His will and do what He says. The most annoying, prolonged pain I have ever experienced in my life was not caused by other people, but it was caused by my own heart, by my own fears, anxieties, and worries. So many days have been ruined by negative negativity of my soul, robbing me from the gift of joy and peace. And I'm not the only one. Many people today, while having all of our basic human needs met, we struggle so much with this bitter taste in our soul. Did you know that close to 20% of Americans take some kind of psychiatric drugs? Did you know that about 10 more percent use illegal drugs? And here's what that tells us. Our wealth, and we're wealthy as Americans, has exposed our elephant and our elephant is scared and our elephant is anxious and our elephant is sometimes out of control I'm gonna talk about that but our wealth has exposed our heart the lonely the worried the stressful the anxious and depressed heart a hundred years ago people worried about how am I gonna eat what am I going to eat where am I going to sleep are we going to survive the vin winter that was their worries but now so they couldn't get to the heart issue so much but now in America all of our basic human needs are met and you would think we would live the most joyful peaceful life but we are the most stressed and worries and now we need help from psychiatrist and today I want to explain something. I, this is the series for you to get emotionally intelligent. So do not say, well, it's, it's not, you know, hyped up message. I, hype is overrated sometimes. Let me, let me just teach you a little bit, okay? Let's open our Bibles today to um, Luke 6, 43. And my first point is that who you are comes from what's in your heart. Who you are comes from what's in your heart. Jesus is saying this, a good tree can't produce bad fruit. And a bad tree can't produce good fruit. A tree is identified by its fruit. Figs are never gathered from thorn bushes and grapes are never picked from bramble bushes. A good person produces Good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. Last week we said we can think with two areas. We can meditate from two areas. You can meditate from your mind. And you can meditate in your heart. You can think in your mind and you can think from your heart. Correct? Bible says as a man thinks in where? In his heart, so he is. So you have, your soul is made out of organs of the soul. Heart is one of them. Mind is another. And will is another. Okay? And these have, all these organs of the soul, they have independent will. Your mind has its will, but so does your heart. Some of you are like, no, 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 it's all connected. Not really. Have you ever decided, to, you looked at yourself in a mirror and said, I need to lose some weight. That was your mind saying, I'm going to go on a diet on Monday. We usually we start diets on Monday after we gorge, uh, you know, on food on Sunday. And Sunday night we, we go for like a week, you know. We look at ourselves in the mirror and our mind said, 
okay, I, I need to look better. I need to get my beach body. And it takes about three months, six months, whatever it is for you. Okay, so you make a plan and your mind says, let's go. But have you noticed there's another? So there's no way. Your mind says, let's do this. But there's another force. Apostle Paul realized the division of the heart, of the soul. And he said, that's what I don't want to do. I do. And those things that I want to do, I don't do. So don't tell me that the heart cannot think for itself and the mind cannot think for itself. Let me give you an illustration. Think about a man riding an elephant. Let's put a picture. Something like that. Okay. A man riding an elephant. The man would be you. And the elephant would be also you. But here's how they're different. The man and elephant would represent the mind. The conscious mind. And the elephant would represent the heart or subconscious mind. How many of you know that an elephant has his own will? In this illustration. So does the man. And if a man cannot control the elephant, the elephant will do whatever he wants. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hold on. Leave that on. Just think about it. The elephant is you. So is the man riding an elephant is you. If the man is your conscious mind, meaning I want to lose weight. The elephant is your subconscious mind. Who is stronger? Who is riding who? The mind is riding the heart. Hold on, hold on. I'm going somewhere. Okay, so we're like, okay. So Jesus said, who you are comes from what's in your heart. Did you know that 95% of what you do is the elephant? When you're driving your car who, and, and not thinking about it, what's happening? It's the elephant in you. It's you. And remember, you and the elephant are the same person. But you were created so complicated. That's why robots cannot ever, I don't think, ever do what humans do. Never. Never. The most robot, because you have the mind and you have the heart. And then you have a third region. It's called the belly. Do you remember what Jesus said about the belly? Come on. Come on, somebody. What did Jesus say about the belly? Out of your bellies will flow the rivers of living water or springs of living water. We are not even getting to that. You are a complicated human machine. Created by a God in His image. So mind. And in America we love. Everything is about the mind. Everything that we can. Heart we kind of begin to now make uh, really huge pushes into the heart area. Understanding the heart. But, not even, but here. Between here and here. The ribs. The intuition. The spirit, we're not even there. But Jesus talked about it. He who believes in me, as the scripture says, out of his belly. Ever thought about that? It's like, what the heck, Jesus? What, what are you talking about? Out of the belly. See, it's important for you to understand what's happening. Okay? A good tree good, equals good fruit. A bad tree, bad fruit. A good heart equals good harvest. An evil heart equals an evil harvest. Now you're like, what does this have to do with my emotions? Hold on. It's coming. Matthew 15, 9. Let's put that. Matthew 15, 9. Says uh, 19. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. For from the heart comes what? Evil thoughts. So can a heart think? Not just from your mind, guys. Notice this. From your heart. Murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying, slander. That comes from your heart. Now, your heart, your elephant, your heart, which is you, determines what kind of harvest you will have in your life. 
Your heart determines what kind of harvest you will have in your life. Let's talk about spiritual harvest. Let's not talk about something else, okay? Uh, here's what Jesus said. A seed that was sown in a good soil. Soil represents what? The heart. Produce 30 times, 60 times, and 100 times what was sown. So here's the truth. Here's the question I have for you all. Do you have a good heart? Because if you do, you will produce good fruit. If you do, you will produce 30, 60, and 100 fold. Do you have a good heart? And if you would ask most people in this building, they would say, of course I have a good heart. But is that true? Let's see what the Bible says about our hearts. Oh boy. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The human heart is the most deceitful of all things. Our mind has great intentions, but our heart doesn't let us do it. Your elephant is stubborn, moody, suspicious, fearful. It sees a little mouse and it starts jumping. And your whole life goes like this. <laughs> See where I'm going with this? Human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? <laughs> so let me ask you a question again. Do we have people who have good heart here and some who have bad heart? Or are all of us have a corrupt heart? And if I'm honest, if I'm really honest, I know my heart is sick. I know my heart is Desperately sick, diseased. I know that about my heart. So, am I screwed? Because only a seed that falls in a good heart will grow. Well, if I have a, de if most of us or all of us have deceitful heart, desperately wicked, sick, nobody even knows how bad it is. Are we screwed? Why? Because. Or not, because Jesus came to heal the broken heart. The enemy came to break your heart. Jesus came to heal our broken hearts. David was a student of his heart. He had everything and he realized how unhappy he was. And he said, he prayed this. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. May the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable to you. He realized with his mind, we all want to do great things for God. With our mind, we want to change the world. We get inspired of looking at somebody on TV and we want to say, we can do that. We want to do that. We want to save the whole city with our mind, don't we? We want to rescue every sinner in our city. What stops us? The elephant. The heart. Now, what is the heart? Again, I've, I've said it before, but let me just give you more. Your heart is the autopilot of your life. Your character is in your heart. Your habits are in your heart. Your routines and emotions are in your heart. Listen to this. Write this down. Once the autopilot has been programmed. Your heart is autopilot of your life. Once the autopilot has been programmed, who is it programmed by? Number one is parents. Have you noticed what your parents do? You most likely will do. Once your heart has been programmed by the community you live or environment you grew up with, usually scientists tell us by seven years old, that 
begins to guide your life. So your elephant is like this. You program it or somebody else program, programs it. And then it has its own mind. It keeps going where it's going. And it's going. Imagine a ship that's been put on autopilot. And somebody comes in and tr pilot, or not pilot, um, captain, comes in and tries to turn the ship. How long will it take for a big cruise ship to turn? A long time. Maybe 10 minutes. But our mind is not a patient one. Our mind wants it now. That's why we love posting something on social media and checking every five minutes if we had any likes. How come we don't have enough likes? That's our mind. So our mind is, gives up way too easy. And guess what? The ship goes back to where? Autopilot. Dr. Caroline Leaf says, if you want to change your heart or the habit in your heart, what do you have to do? Repetition of something. How many days? 21. And she says three of 21. So 63 days. If you have a habit that your mind wants to change. Remember, your heart is that automatic pilot. It's been set already. What you've been doing, how you have been behaving, the habits that you have, it's all been set. The culture you live in, the environment you live in, it's been set. That elephant, put that elephant up. It's going. It has its own mind. It has its own thoughts. And you set it and forget it. And it keeps going. And we're wondering what's going on. Why is it that I want to change? I want to pray more. I want to read my Bible regularly. I want to be close to Jesus regularly. And I try and then I just can't because that elephant is strong. Ever written an elephant? You're not in control. It has its own mind. How's your elephant? Is it sick and desperately wicked? Have you noticed that your elephant always thinks negatively of something? Did you know? Science tells us that if they blink a picture on the screen, like 0 0.0001 second, your mind will not catch it, but your heart will. It's not enough for your mind to register it. But your heart, your subconscious mind, gets it. Studies have been proven. And media, oh, what, what do they put that we don't even see? With our mind, but our heart. It's getting to our heart. You are this whole package. You are the, your conscious mind and subconscious mind. It's all one. You are the ship and the captain. Now, it's nice to have an elephant. Because once you learn, teach your elephant how to ride a bicycle... Imagine every time getting to a bicycle and trying to learn again. That would suck. Right? But once you learn how to ride a bicycle, it's like you never have to do it because the elephant got it. That's it. But also bad habits. Once you teach or your parents have passed on to you those bad habits by watching. Right? We do what animals learn through behavior observation. The most primitive uh, way of learning is to observe somebody. Even anointing, sometimes it's better caught than it's taught. Because you watch somebody and you're like, I know, I, I understand that. Somehow deep inside. And so, good and bad. And Bible says that our elephant is desperately wicked. <laughs> so what's going on? What should we do? I know my elephant is wicked. I know that I want to do so much more, but I waste so much time on a couch. I know I shouldn't laugh at some jokes, but I still do. My elephant is no good. Let's talk about the feelings now. Let's add feelings. Your, your heart 
has an ability to feel more than your mind. And I've always knew this, but I could not explain it till today. I knew it since my 20s. I knew that I'm not thinking anything. Why am I so anxious in here? I'm not worried about anything. Why am I worried in here? Why? And now I understand. It's my heart. It's my heart. And my mom probably taught some of that worries. And my dad probably taught. And my uncles and my grandma probably taught me some things. And now I have to live with them. But actually I don't. Because I, when I have come to Christ... He promised to change my life. He promises to change your life. And here's the truth. And I've, I've been testing God in these things for years now. And God is faithful. He will change your heart. He says, I want to give you a new heart. I want to give you a clean, clean heart. I want to take away the, the hard, desperately wicked heart and give you a gentle heart of flesh. That's what God wants to do. That's what he's in the business of doing. Last week we had that Super Bowl Sunday and that uh, player, the last one, who talked about how he wanted God to change his heart like this. But it didn't happen like this. It happened one by one. As he partnered with the Lord, the Lord began to change his heart. Some of you are here and wondering, God, when are you going to use me greatly? And God says, I am. I am changing your heart. I'm getting your heart better. Because a bleeding, if, if, if I let you, unhealthy leaders produce other unhealthy, broken, bleeding leaders. God wants to heal us. God wants to heal our heart. And Jesus said, my mission is to heal the broken hearted. King Saul, appointed by God to be king of Israel, blessed by God, has money, has castles, has bodyguards. God has given him his enemies. He's defeated his enemies, but his heart is sick. You can be saved and your heart is still sick. You're going to heaven, but you're miserable going at it because your heart is sick. And so King Saul, instead of enjoying the life and the blessing and the privilege, can, modern language, privilege, <laughs> Jewish privilege, I want to say that. Instead of enjoying that privilege that God has given him, notice what he does because his heart is so wicked. He chases a teenage boy for years through the desert, smelling the dust, eating the dust, sleeping in tents, going to caves for bathroom breaks. There's no even bathrooms there. He's chasing you and you wonder why. Why are you doing that? Some of you might have the riches, your basic needs met, and more. And you still have chaos in your heart. You still have that elephant out of control. He's not obeying the, the, uh, the, the mind. He's not obeying it. You want to do good. You want to help other people. You want to win people for Christ. And then the elephant says, nope. Because I have a... Elephant doesn't like to change. He just wants to go. He just wants to go. The heart just wants to do what it's been programmed to do. Now the world will say to you, reprogram your heart. Careful. Because you can make more damage by reprogramming your heart. Your subconscious mind. I'm going to talk about it in a second here. So what's the solution? Realize the condition of your heart. The solution is I have to say, God, I, I do have a sick heart. God, I do have diseased heart. What caused that sickness is my sin that was passed along from my parents and grandparents and great-grandparents to Adam and Eve. See, that's why God loves you so much. That's why God treats you and angels differently. When angel sins, it's over. When you sin, God gives us chances after chances after chances. Why? Because he understands we were born with this. 
We were born with it. Who's that senior says that? Baby, I was born this way. Lady God, you were born with a deceitful, sick heart. You were. You were. I was. I was born with it. And now I have to untangle all this sin that's, that's been in me. So I have to realize, you know, in an AA meeting, they say the first step is to admit something. What do you have to admit today? Bless you. <laughs> that I have a diseased heart. And it's the cause of a lot of pain in my life. It's a cause of a lot of depression in my life. It's a cause of a lot of these things in my life. Um, number two, what do we do? Write this down. Number two is, I got to pray what David prayed. What did David pray? Create. Let's put this on. Psalm 5110. This has got to be our prayer. Create in me a clean heart. Okay, if David didn't say that, how many of you would say that about yourself? Probably not, because we're not students of our heart. We just, we just... Made a, made a, we say this statement that everybody else says, I have a good heart. And that's it. We just believe it. We really don't dig deep and find out if we really do. But David was the student of the heart. And he penned it so perfectly. Create in me a clean heart. Oh God. Would you pray this week with me? Lord, create in me. I can't do it on my, by myself. Without him, I can't do nothing. I have to work with the Lord. Listen, even positive confessions or affirmation, as you call it, I call them confessions, will not change your life unless you believe it and there's power that, that comes with it. You can confess till you blew in the face and it's not going to work because you have to believe it. You have to have faith. The Bible says if you speak in faith, if you pray in faith, that's the foundation of our prayer, of our speech. Create in me a clean heart. Only God can do it. I cannot create in me a clean heart. Now, I can become politically correct. Oh, yeah. There are so many people who are politically correct. And just now in Virginia, you guys are finding out that people were in Ku Klux Klan and stuff like that. But they were so politically correct till they got discovered. Our culture knows how to be politically correct. But just because you can fake it, right? Just because you can fake it, eventually you will be exposed. Unless the Lord creates a clean heart, a pure heart. Create in me. That's what I want. <laughs> character is I don't have to worry of being found out in some area of my life. That's character. That's my heart. And so I, I want us to pray this, create in me a clean heart, oh God. If you're young people, listen to me, young people, pray that. Lord, clean heart. If you start right, imagine where you will be. Renew a loyal spirit or an upright spirit or steadfast spirit within me. All right. You, <laughs> give me a cheerful heart. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed, defeated spirit dries up the bones. That's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to crush your heart with sin, with bitterness, unforgiveness, envy, jealousy, pornography lust greed he wants to crush it those things are bitter for your heart god wants to heal and put your feet on the right path put that elephant your heart that's you remember don't divide you between you it's you <laughs> he wants to put you on the right track he wants your mind to guide your heart and here's Last thing. How do we change the course of the elephant? If I look at your life or you look at my life, 
If you look at the elephant, you'll see where I'm going from where I've been. I could tell you I have great intentions, but I will go where my elephant will tell me to go. So how do I change the direction of my elephant if it's going the wrong way? How? Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Here's how it works. It's through meditation. And he shall meditate on the word. He shall renew his mind through meditation. What is meditation? Meditation is like taking a gum and chewing it till everything is, every sugar is gone out of it. So there's nothing left. Meditation is like a cow taking a grass. You cow, Kelly, you're a cow person. Sorry, I, I didn't mean it right. You, you, you raise cows and stuff. What a cow does is it takes grass and chews it. And then rechews it. Rechews it. Why? It wants all of the what nutrients out of it. That's how you should do. You shouldn't read a lot of Bible. You should take a promise of God out of the Bible and you should chew on it all day. Meditate. 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 There's time for being silent in the presence of God. Be still and know that I'm the Lord. There's time for that. Okay. But Bible says meditate on the Word. What you meditate on for months, sometimes years, will go into your heart. You don't want to just meditate on, oh, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. You know, just, no, you want to meditate on the Word. You want, because the Word of God is truth. And what it does, it goes through your mind into your heart. Repetition, repetition, until your heart gets it. And once it gets it, guys, it's so quick. It's like within a day. I remember three years ago, I was in Florida right after Christmas. And I got really sick. I went on vacation. Every year we go on vacation after Christmas. And I got really sick. So in th three days, I was in bed. Just sick. But something was happening in my heart. God was healing my heart as my body was being sick. And I got up. And after that, I was never the same. Because... I was struggling with another area of anxiety in my life and my anxiety was not gone but broken. I felt like something broke that anxiety. And today sometimes I get anxious but I know what power I have over this. But before I couldn't control it. And during that time God broke that in my life. He wants to do that for you. So how do you change the course of an elephant of your heart? meditating on the word being transformed you cannot change your heart just say heart i need you to change no you can't do that heart is changed over time and meditation on the word of god transformation happens by renewing your mind make sense you got to go into the life group this wednesday and talk about it guys i hope you have I hope you go a lot deeper. I hope you share stuff because this message is not done yet. This is just information. And information does this, excites us. Ah! You know what gives us transformation? Repetition. Repetition. That's why I'm going to preach on it so you get it. Thanks for tuning in to New Life Sermon Series Online. If you're blessed by these messages and are interested in helping spread the Word of God to others, make an investment today you can give at newlifechurchsf.org. If you have a story or a testimony to share, let us know on our website as well. We hope you have a blessed day and enjoy today's message by Pastor Alex.